Thinking about a laser for a new project or just to have in your shop? Stay tuned. Hey everybody, Chris Sergeant Taz here, and today I'm going to go over why I purchased a K40 laser over a diode laser, some of the other things that are on the market. Um, I did a bit of research, and also funding is kind of low, so I was looking at the cheaper alternatives. What I went with after countless YouTube videos and looking over some of the different forums and stuff was an actual Chinese K40 laser that was locally sourced through eBay that was already in the States. So not 100% sure if it's actually an Ohm Tech laser or not, but I ordered off of eBay from a, from a seller that said Ohm Tech. Heard a lot of good things about Ohm Tech, so I rolled with it. Um, what you'll see in the next couple of clips is what I got, which I knew I was gonna have to work on when I got it. There was no doubt in my mind. Um, Going on the lower end of a laser, especially a K40, you're going to have to do some things before you ever start playing with it. So keep that in mind. It isn't a plug-and-play kind of thing. Um, it isn't really difficult to do, but you have to kind of go through the steps when you get one of these. Um, so I got the K40 laser delivered within like four days because it was like really local. So it was really close to me um, in Chicago. So... My shipping is a bit better than most people, considering I'm in Chicago. Um, but uh, when I got it, it, it arrived nicely packaged. It was well wrapped. But I'm going from some of the talks that people had that Ohm Tech or whoever sells this thing goes through this machine. They don't. So the first thing I did was actually... I. I looked at it the inside, of course, taking all the parts out. Um, they give you the, you know, the cheaper fan duct. Um, it's got a newer setup because it actually has like a, a, a large 180 millimeter PC fan, as opposed to the old blower fans they would give you with the older units. So that was a bit different. Um, mine's all electronic, so I knew I was gonna have to put a meter on it. I knew I wasn't going to like the uh, battery-operated temperature gauges that came with it. I knew I was going to switch those out. And I also knew that I was probably going to upgrade to air assist as well. I bought most of this stuff beforehand, so I was prepared to some degree to set this printer, uh, this cutter up the way I wanted it. I've been talking about printers, sorry. So I was going to set the, set the laser cutter up the way I, I, I thought it should be set up. Um, Going through the initial inspection, there was a couple of scratches, which they refunded me for, which, you know, that was good. Um, I didn't get the bolts for the wheels to set up the printer itself. It sits on wheels. I, I didn't get the screws for those. So I got the wheels, but I didn't have anything to attach them with. So I wound up printing up some legs anyways, because I didn't want to roll around on my desk. It, it doesn't feel safe to be on rollers anyways because there's no way to move it in, in, my, in my office slash shop. So it was more sense to just print up a couple of foot pegs. And then I used um, double-sided tape just in case I want to remove them later on because I might be cutting out the bottom for my rotary that I picked up. Another, it, it, it's, it's a rabbit hole just like 3D printing. So initially going through, I noticed that all of the mirrors were hot glued, which I'm assuming because it's being shipped from China rather than having them bounce around and shipping, they glued those so you don't lose the adjustment that they made at the factory. Um, it was firing okay when I first got it. So, I mean, I did a test, of course, but there was a couple other steps that I'm missing right now that I just thought about, was checking the ground wire, making sure that to clean the paint off when a ground wire attaches to the back of the unit, that's important because you don't want to get shocked when you're touching the unit. And we all know how easy that can be when it's not grounded properly. 
Um, my house is actually grounded because I did the electrical myself, so I know for sure that everything, including my boxes, are grounded properly. So that's not a big issue. But if you're like in a rental house or you know apartment, you, you don't know if your ground's good. So I would recommend you ground the machine to something. Run that ground wire and make sure it's grounded to something. Go from there. Do what you will. I'm not an electrician by trade, so I'm I'm just a wannabe jack of all trades. So keep that in mind. Anyways, went through the process of setting up the laser. I noticed that the laser wasn't quite hitting material the way I'd like. So first I thought the mirrors, right? So yeah, I went through, looked at the mirrors. They all seemed clean, they all seemed clear, and it seemed like with the tape method of checking them, it was fine. Um, then I got to this head. The stock head that was on there was machined extremely so much so that I probably don't have, I don't have to put a picture up over here or over here depending on how I edit this but it was actually a burr inside here for machining that didn't go through it's got like a piece hanging off so the laser would come in and get slightly deflected when it came through so not knowing a lot about lasers, when I first picked it up, I wasn't sure what the heck was up, but I had bought an extra head anyways because I was going to change it out to a, a better better anodized version, the blue one. I'll show you a picture of it in a minute. Um, and it had the air assist nozzle already on it because I had printed out an air assist nozzle for this one. But I didn't wind up using it because this head had a problem. I contacted them through the eBay seller. Um, they gave me another discount and sent me some money back. So roughly, I want to say I spent maybe $340 total from them because they gave me a refund for the missing screws, which they sent, and because the laser head was messed up. But you got to check this stuff when you get one of these. They're a hobby laser. They're not refined by any stretch of imagination. But your trade-off is, if you want something that's already done, you want something that works plug and play, you're spending five to $6,000 minimum for a decent laser. This, um, all in invested, I'm gonna say just around maybe a thousand, roughly. If I mean, I piecemealed some of this stuff, so I, I replaced all of the meters. So all my temperature gauges, are all electronic versus battery operated. Um, I put a flow meter on it. I also printed up a, a visual meter to see it. Um, I added the voltage meter instead of using the digital electronics that are on the board. I did think about upgrading the board, but right now I'm not gonna bother with it because to me it costs as much as almost, almost as much as I paid for the whole unit, and I haven't found a better solution yet. I'm looking. I don't know if I want to go with Gerbil or not. The cohesion was interesting, but I think the board's just too expensive for what what it is. I mean, granted, someone did a lot of work to get to where it's at, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's in the right price point, whereas I can get the same kind of board for a printer for 30 40 bucks. I mean, I don't mind paying for the software. I understand that aspect of it, but the board itself shouldn't be that kind of money, in my opinion. So that's why I didn't go that route. Um, I've done quite a few things, as you can tell, with the laser cutter. Um, it, it is a, a learning curve. So you got to play around with materials, focus, that kind of thing. Um, I pulled out the entire bed that was included in it that was just worthless, in my opinion. It, it has a small little section, unusable space. The other thing I did was the exhaust. A bunch of people were cutting them. I just unscrewed it and took it out and printed my own duct that was shorter, so I gave myself more space on the K40 itself. Much easier, um, not a lot of cutting. If I ever want to go back to the longer exhaust vent, I still have it. 
So that's why I, I printed one. Plus, I have the bigger printer, so it was a no-brainer. Easy to print. I found the, the STL on Thingiverse, made it fit perfect, used the existing screws right back where it went. So there was no need for me to dig in there, pull the gantry out or any of that stuff to cut down maybe about an inch and a half of ducting that was over, which with the stock bed would be where it needs to be. You're losing space no matter what you do. If you leave that in there, there's not enough room on the bed for like bigger projects. So I want to get as much maximized space out of that setup as I could. So I pulled out the whole bed, got myself a um, honeycomb style bed and a lab jack that I put magnets on to hold it in place so I can adjust the height and adjust the focus of my laser. Because it's not quite with, the, with their bed, it's not always going to be right. You, you want to put thicker material in. If it's on that bed, you're not going to have any adjustment on the on the laser. So you need to get rid of that right out the gate. Keep that in mind. The K40 is going to take work. It's not something that's, you know, like I said, plug and play. And if you're not comfortable with electronics, if you're not comfortable with taking something apart that's brand new, then don't go this route. I can guarantee you, you won't be happy. I'm really happy with the laser. It works great for what I do. I'm still learning. Um, I'd like to go with a diode laser too at some point, but until I get around to it, I, I, this is the machine that's going to do some of my basic stuff that I wanted to do with a laser. Um, I did, I've done quite a bit of cutting. It's still, I'm still trying to master materials because some of the stuff, depending on what kind of plastic you get, and things like that, there are different nuances to, to being either rolled or, or molded, or I can't even think of the word right now, but there are different variations in plastics and you have to kind of adjust the settings and, and use practice pieces until you can get those settings. There's tons of different tests out there. Um, I'm kind of the guy that just tries out a piece and rolls with it because uh, to me, I, spending three and a half hours trying to figure out how to make the test work, I can just figure out if the laser is working. In my opinion, and that's the way I that's the way I, I my mind works. So you have to keep that in mind. Not a bad purchase. I think it was worth every penny I spent. I did wind up replacing the uh, water pump that comes with it. It's like a fish pump. I I, I actually directly from Ohm Tech. <laughs> this time around I ordered a chiller now granted it doesn't actually chill the water I got the cheap end one that more or less keeps it cool and flowing so it doesn't really it doesn't really um, refrigerate the um, water but it seems to work good enough for the laser that I have I'm not using a high industrial size you know a 60 or 70 watt laser that would really, really require an expensive chiller because you're talking I want to. I want to say I spent 170 on the new chiller, but the flow is awesome on it. So now I know I don't have any air bubbles in my tube, which is a no-no when you're using the laser. So that's why I went that route. The little fish pump worked. Don't get me wrong, but I was just leery because I'd get air bubbles every once in a while between turning it on and off. And it was like, eh. I might as well just invest the extra money so I don't pop my laser by not having flow or having enough water going through that, that CO2 cartridge to maintain the, the cool laser. Um, other than that, it, it's been pretty good. Uh, I will go further along on this and go over some of the mods I did, maybe in the next video or down, and then go over exactly what I did. But I pretty much made it my own. So I, I, I kind of like making things my own, obviously. It works for me. I like to tinker, and it does the job I wanted it to do. So other than that, once I get into some of the mods I did and why I did them, you, you know, it's your decision on what you want to do. Like I said, if you want a laser that's ready to go out of the box, you're going to spend five to $6,000. Don't kid yourself. If you want one that's ready to work, ready to go, 
and whatever certain materials that you exactly know are going to go with it. You want to go with somebody who's going to walk you through it. You're going to spend that kind of money. If you're okay with tinkering and you're okay with playing with electronics and maybe making adjustments and, and, and figuring out what you want from the laser, then the, the K40 is the way to go. Um, other than that, like I said, the next couple of videos, I'm probably going to go over the different mods I did and why I did them to give you an idea of what you're looking at. And hopefully this will be a fun new way for me to actually get some videos out to you guys. Anyways, thanks for watching. Give me a like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. And as always, see ya.